Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1040. You've been warned. Hello, my Nakama Tachi, this is Joy Girl, and we're gonna speculate on the new mystery that's been raised as a result of the recent reveal in the latest chapter. So Momonosuke dropped a massive bomb that Zunisha was Joy Boy's companion, or the word used in Japanese, Nakama. So that heavily suggests that Joy Boy and Zunisha were part of the same crew. And of course that resulted in a heck load of speculations. And because like the most of you, I'm a crazy fan and a large portion of my brain is constantly thinking about One Piece. I spent most of my weekend reading your comments, scouring online and amalgamated these alongside my own thoughts and speculations. And here's what I've come up with. So one thing that I think gets really strengthened as a result of this revelation is the idea Idea that Joy Boy was a giant. Given Zunisha's massive size, maybe it was a crew of giants. And of course, this idea would work quite nicely with a few other pieces of supporting evidence, potentially supporting evidence, if you will. The most obvious being the massive hat at Marajoie, with the straw hat being an iconic artifact in the series, and the fact that it's been worn by so many important individuals, it is widely believed that that hat we saw at Marajoie belonged to Joy Boy. We also have the existence of a giant ship, the Noah, so then if we consider that Joy Boy was a giant with a giant crew, start wondering was Noah Joy Boy's ship? And regardless of whether that's true or not, there is obviously a huge connection here between Noah and the huge revelation that we got in this latest chapter. For one, the Fishman Island arc where we saw Noah is actually also the first time that we heard of Joy Boy. And of course, there's also the promise that we know Joy Boy made to Poseidon as well as to the inhabitants of Fishman Island. So with all of these combined, a popular idea that I see coming up a lot is the idea that Joy Boy was a giant. Or like the idea that I've talked about before and you can watch that video if you haven't already, Joy Boy may have at least had the Gomu Gomu no Mi, meaning that he had the ability to blow himself up so that he could become a giant size. And I do talk about all of this deeper in that video, but if Joy Boy was the original holder of the Gomu Gomu no Mi, it makes sense why it was such a prize, such an important devil fruit that the world government wanted to get their hands on it. Anyways, whilst we're also on the topic of giants, another idea that I've seen coming up is that I've seen some people say that the skull on Onigashima is actually Joy Boy's skull. But I think in that case, we would have to point out that the sizes don't match. I mean, yes, the hat that we saw being preserved at Marajoa was huge, but I don't think it's quite as big to fit the massive skull that we have at Onigashima. And in saying that, Oda can also be inconsistent in how he draws the sizes of different things, so I suppose it is difficult to conclusively say that the hat is too small to fit that skull, or you could even get crazier and bring science into it and say that as the hat was being preserved in ice, it seems like as it was being frozen, it shrunk, because that's what happens, right? But anyways, forgetting all of that and thinking about Onigashima in that case, it does bring us to the topic of Wano and how the island is at the center of all of this, how it's involved. Because it does seem like Wano is definitely like a key to everything going on here. And I think this became only clearer after the dialogue, the inner monologue that we saw in chapter 1040. Big Mum questioning Roger and the One Piece, which is known to the rest of the world as treasure, but we know to be deeper than that and how it holds answers to the world's greatest secrets. So then Big Mum thinking about this in the same chapter that we get a huge reveal about Joy Boy. I don't think we ever needed such a clear indication, but to answer Big Mom's question, I think we can safely say that yes, Wano is at the center of all of this. It holds a lot of the secrets, even if it doesn't necessarily hold the treasure going by the Viz translation. So just to piece these all together and think about how Wano is so central to all of this, because there's the fact that Wano is home to the Poneglyphs as it was the Kazuki clan that created it. Odin suggested that the reason why Wano's borders were closed is directly linked to what happened during the Void Century. Even Kaido, one of the handful of characters who has mentioned Joy Boy, has also suggested that there's a special reason why he's chosen Wano as his home base. And now, of course, there's the appearance of Zunisha, Joy Boy's former companion, now the one transporting Zoro. And we obviously also know that Zoro and Wano have had a long-held alliance with each other. And I think there is a way where this could all come together. A really popular theory that's been around for quite a while is the idea that Wano is made up 
up of different islands. That's why each region has its own season. And we also have an in-series explanation how this could all be possible through the existence of ores, literally known as the continent puller. So then considering this theory, and then also starting to bring in Zunish's crime and the promise made to Fishman Island, I think we could take this idea further. Let's start with Zunisha, seeing as that's the hot topic that's been brought about by the latest chapter. First of all, we know that Zunisha isn't just walking around aimlessly. Miyagi asks, what have you been walking towards? And because of the way that that dialogue's been worded, I tended to associate that with the idea that Zunisha's been walking towards a particular destination. But perhaps rather than looking at it from that lens, we should be thinking about it more around the idea that Zunisha has been walking for a particular purpose rather than to a specific location. And the reason why I say this is because what if the original plan for Zunisha was also to transport Zo to Wano? It could have been intended for Zo to make up a part of Wano, but Zunisha just simply didn't get there in time. We know that Zo and Wano have been allies for an extremely long time, and one piece of evidence for this is the Kazuki crest which was found at Zo. And something that's always struck me about that crest is the eight circles, those eight dots, which has always been a source of curiosity for me, and I'm sure for a lot of you as well. And now this is an idea that I've held for a while, but I've long thought that those eight dots, those eight circles, could be representative of the eight countries, the eight islands, which defied the 20 kingdoms, which defied the world government, and allied with the great kingdom, the ancient kingdom. And the reason why I thought this is because of a potential real-life, real-world parallel. As we know, Oda likes to draw on things, draw on inspiration from real life, from history, History. And it just so happens that the Philippines flag has a sun with eight rays surrounding it. And those eight rays each represent a province of the Philippines who were majorly involved in a revolution, in a revolt against Spanish colonization. And I don't know, I think that sounds pretty fitting to what we could have here. When we look at how we could apply it to One Piece, how we could apply it to the crest of the Kazuki clan, those eight circles, those eight dots could each represent a region of Wano. But of course, as it stands, Wano is currently made up of only six regions. Now, I actually found someone who had a pretty similar idea, but they also counted Onigashima as also a region, therefore counting seven, and therefore Zo could make up that final eighth circle, that eighth dot. But me, I think I'm just gonna actually stick with the six regions of mainland Wano for now, because my idea is that Zo could make up number seven and Fishman Island could make up number eight. If the crime that Zunisha committed was failing to transport Zo to Wano in time, maybe the promise that Joy Boy failed to keep with Poseidon was failing to bring them a above water so that Fishman Island could join Wano. And if you think about it, this could go deeper than that. Zo is an island populated by minks and Fishman Island, as the name suggests, populated by Fishman and also Merfolk. Maybe Wano was supposed to be sort of a safe haven for all of the races who were being discriminated against and who were being viewed as threats by the rest of the world or by the world government, the 20 kingdoms as it was still back then. The One Piece world is made up of so many interesting and diverse species, many of which have have special powers and abilities that often makes them targets and also potentially considered threats. We've seen special races like dwarves, like the mermaids, being considered rare and therefore making them slaves, as well as the huge fascination that the world government seems to have with giants and possibly even the Lunarians before that based off what we saw from King's backstory. And you could also speculate about other species like the Three-Eyed Tribe, for example. But anyways, if this is true, if Wano was supposed to be a place where all of these races could live in peace, live in harmony, Harmony. It could also have a pretty huge thematic significance in the sense that a key idea, a key message that we've seen throughout the Wano arc is that you shouldn't be afraid of those who are different to you. It's a key lesson that we've seen the Wano citizens have to learn with how they treated the Minks, how they treated Kawamatsu, and it could really come full circle if we actually find out that its whole purpose from the beginning was actually to accommodate for all of these special races. Now this does obviously bring up a question, a hole in this idea as to why none of these special races can be seen at Wano then because Wano is a pretty homogenized country. And the easiest counter that I would have to offer is maybe because because they failed in bringing all those lands together, perhaps the plan was actually to transport the people afterwards and because they actually weren't able to complete Wano in time, 
and therefore none of the races actually made it to Wano. And if this is true or something like that, maybe the fact that Zunisha failed to bring Zo to Wano in time, maybe that's why the order was given to Zunisha to keep on walking because if the Minx couldn't be safe at Wano, they needed to ensure that they would remain safe and wouldn't be found and could remain hidden by Zunisha continuing to walk, meaning that no one would ever actually be able to find them. And this could also fit with what we know of Noah and its purpose. Now granted, we don't know much. It's said that its actual purpose will be fulfilled once it reaches above water. But what we do get hinted in this series is that the original purpose, the original plan of the Fishman Island ancestors was to join the rest of the world above water. And this is actually something that I had actually forgotten about. But whilst I was doing the research for this discussion, during the flashback for Orohime, we see Neptune talking to his minister, the minister of the left. And the minister is worried about the reckless actions of Otohime, of the queen. And Neptune says that Otohime's goal is actually precisely the one that their forebearers were trying to achieve hundreds of years ago. And as Neptune is saying this, Oda actually draws in that panel, he draws the Noah, suggesting that that was the original plan for Noah made centuries ago. And this theory of Wano being a safe haven for all of these species could also make sense when we look at the biblical reference behind Noah. Noah was warned by God about a great flood that was going to wipe out the earth, all of its creatures, all of its humans. So Noah builds a great ark where alongside his family, he also brings on board with him one male and one female of each species of animal. And this was so that even after the great cleansing, they could still repopulate the earth. So then applied to One Piece, in a similar sense, maybe Wano was supposed to save all of the world's creatures, all of the different races, including the merfolk, including the fishmen, the minks, the giants, what have you. Now this would then suggest that Zunisha was actually sentenced by the good guys, by Joy Boy himself possibly. And supporting this idea could be the dialogue when we actually found out about Zunisha's crime, because the words that were used was that Zunisha was ordered, not necessarily punished or sentenced, but he was following orders. But then again, the word crime was also used, and so it just seems a little strange thinking that the failure to bring Zo to Wano would be considered a crime and not just an unfortunate mistake or unfortunate event. Unless, of course, the story gets spicier and we find out that Zunisha actually made a betrayal of some kind or something. But the reason why I bring this up is because there is also the flip side to this and the idea that Zunisha was actually sentenced by the bad guys, by the world government, maybe by Imu, and maybe the crime was helping Joy Boy or helping the Great Kingdom. I've even seen some theories online that Zunisha and Imu are actually related because of their similar eyes. But then in that case, I do have to wonder if Zunisha was sentenced by Imu or by the world government, why then does it listen to Momonosuke? Surely if Imu or the world government was the one to order Zunisha was to sentence a punishment, surely they wouldn't have left a loophole so that Zunisha would be able to come under the control of someone allied to the Great Kingdom. But then I guess the counter to this could be that given Zunisha's loyalty, given its original allegiance to Joy Boy and therefore most likely the Great Kingdom, maybe that means even despite its orders, despite its punishment, the orders of Momo coming from his family, coming from the Kazuki, is able to override this sort of punishment. Either way, I think this brings up a really interesting question of why Momonosuke? We've seen a few characters possessing this ability of the voice of all things, so why Momo specifically? Because what we've seen at Zo, only Momonosuke holds the ability to talk back to Zunisha, and Zunisha will only follow Momonosuke's orders. Luffy actually said during that arc that Zunisha won't listen to him. Now this has become somewhat contested as a result of the Wano arc when Luffy fell off Onigashima and fell into the water. We saw him use the voice of all things and now some people are speculating that it was during that time he actually communicated to Zunisha and that's why Zunisha has arrived at Wano. Now personally I've always interpreted that as Luffy talking to Momonosuke because we did see Momonosuke relay Luffy's message to the rest of Onigashima later conveying his message that he's alive that he is going to defeat Kaido and of course we all also know that Momo stayed behind at Zo to talk to Zunisha and so I just figured that he must have requested his help earlier on. And so I think because of this, as of this moment, Momonosuke is the only character confirmed to be able to communicate with Zunisha. I've also seen some theories from people who believe that Momonosuke is actually Joy Boy. On the one hand, just because practically everything actually points to Luffy being Joy Boy, a part of me actually wouldn't be surprised if Oda pulls one under us and throws in a twist of 
Momonosuke being Joy Boy or someone else other than Luffy being Joy Boy. But I do have to say that for the most part, I do still believe that it is Luffy that is Joy Boy. He's our main character after all, and we've seen heavy links, heavy connections to Joy Boy. And I have actually discussed this recently, so you know, make sure to check that out. But something else that I found interesting, again, whilst I was rereading some of the Fishman Island arc, was a panel from chapter 626. So in this chapter, Otohime is explaining to her children, to her sons, about Shirohoshi and her power as Poseidon. And while she's doing this, she also mentions that there will be a man to guide Shirohoshi. And in that panel, Oda draws a silhouette of a man, supposedly this man who's going to guide Shirohoshi, and I have to say that it really closely resembles Luffy. Actually, when I first saw it, I also thought that it looks like Shanks as well. That was honestly my immediate response, but in all seriousness, it does look like Luffy, unless Momonosuke undergoes some drastic hairstyle change. And then on top of that, I also think it's unlikely that Momonosuke is Joy Boy because of the timeline. During Odin's flashback, we see the Sea Kings talking about being excited of their sovereign's arrival. They say that one of their sovereigns will be born in 10 years, and that is obviously referring to Shirohoshi, but then they also say another in a distant sea. And presumably that's talking about Joy Boy because they say that these two sovereigns will meet, therefore fulfilling the prophecy or the comments that Otohime made earlier about the man who's going to guide Poseidon. And now, given the fact that Momonosuke would have already been born at this time the Sea Kings were talking, I don't think that they were referring to him. Even if Momo isn't Joy Boy, we do know that he is special. This seems to have been confirmed in Odin's journal because after Momo reads it, we see him say to Shinobu that it's imperative that he survives. And it seemed like he wasn't just referring to Wano's sake, but something deeper, something greater. Most likely this whole thing going on concerning Joy Boy, the Void Century, the Ancient Kingdom, and so on, given that it was Odin's journal that he was reading, and we know that he wrote down a lot of what he learned about the whole world in that journal. And again, this then brings up the question of why Momo? And did Odin know about this? Is that the reason why Toki specifically sent Momonosuke into the future and not Hiyori? Maybe it wasn't simply ensuring that the Kazuki bloodline survives, but that Momonosuke specifically survives and fulfills some sort of purpose. And then thinking about that for me also raises the question of Momonosuke joining the Straw Hat, perhaps joining the crew to fulfill his post Wano mission, whatever that may be. But I'm gonna end the discussion here before we get into that whole other topic. So let me know your thoughts on this idea or if you have theories of your own, let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you'd like more One Piece content and you can also join our Joyfully Discord server and even become a patron member. And I thank all my patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.